I yeah. mean, you want to have a balance of that. Um, most bands would tell you that. You want to have some things where you feel safe, you know the song, you can get your muscle memory, mm -hmm. things that work to an audience, show busy, things like that, mm -hmm. mixed with something to keep a little spark in your um, love life, as it were, you know, like um, experimentation, uh, trying new things, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> threesomes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Helena and I'm joined by Pavement for the latest in Enemies in Conversation series. Guys, thank you so much for joining Enemy. Um, the reunion tour is in full swing. Dive straight in. How's it been going? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, I think we're a little over our jet lag and <laughs> I mean, but uh, the shows have been pretty fun. How you know? has it been? Where have you been in the UK so far? Uh, we we started in Leeds, and then we went up to Glasgow, Edinburgh, and then Manchester, and now four, four nights days, here. Four yeah. days over in Camden at the Roundhouse. And the Roundhouse is one of London's most iconic venues. Um, how has it been playing there? Loud. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. The people are like, um, I mean, we played on Saturday night. That was... Uh, pretty beery, I would say. <laughs> well, every night. I mean, there was some crowd surfing, some, some, a uh, lot of singing along, and a lot of, you know, camaraderie from on stage radiating through the crowd into the backstage with our family and friends there. So, I don't know. Pretty cool. What were those initial rehearsals like when you decided to do the reunion tour? Do you rehearse in a different way than you used to? Yeah, sort of. I mean, the studio we rehearsed in was a little nicer than you, the old <laughs> days, I guess. But uh, yeah, it had um, monitors. Uh, it was in an actual studio instead <laughs> of a rehearsal room, so I could really hear everybody what they were playing or trying to play, or um, playing. It's a lot of opportunity to um, actually say something like, "This could be better. This could yeah. be worse." Where in the past, I kind of just focused on the records, making sure they were good. And then I just let, every, I mean, we, everyone did whatever they want, not I just let them. I, you know, the, the sound oh, just yeah. was what it was. I never even listened to a single live performance of Pavement you're my whole you're, life. you're lucky, you're lucky, you know. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to. I mean, I heard one, we played Very at, hit and miss. at Pookle Pop or something, and it was like really good show. Supposedly it was like incredible live show, so maybe I could have like an inflated um, sense of self-worth, which every musician kind of needs. Um, but so this time, yeah, listen to everything really pretty closely and even playbacks with the, um, it's probably things that real bands do all the time, you know, like, um, but we were in a more like shambolic, uh, state back then. So mm. I guess, yeah, things are a little more together, but you can't completely, uh, make it so tight and clean with a group like this. There's like a innate pavement sound that can't be changed i think uh you'd have to ask the audience but i think it's coming across that way yeah. <clears throat> definitely definitely and you know your reunion tour initially was billed as these two shows at primavera sound 2020 and obviously that didn't happen given you know the little worldwide pandemic but um you know had that happened would it have only been those two shows or were you Always no, gonna extend it. Was it was probably gonna happen unless it really felt wrong. Those shows, um, it was kind of like up to me to be honest. Everybody was totally down for it, but I was being the qual quality control guy, you know, <laughs> like seeing if this feels real or right, you know. Um, and of course, I was ha feeling it would be because there was a lot of interest, and it was like more exciting and better venues that I play in my solo career you know so i was like up for it and i was also up for playing these songs with the guys and like their classic songs like scott would say um <laughs> and so i was psyched for that and yeah so we sort of said had to say like all right we're just gonna we don't have this it's it takes so long to uh secure the decent venues now you mm. know i'm probably talking to people there's like a backlog of bands that are touring at all times. So we yeah. had to just say like, come on, let's do it. And um, let's go around the world and yeah. and like have some, have some pavement, 
nostalgia and pavement. Uh, not only nostalgia, but see how it, as you're probably going to ask me, how it relates now. <laughs> how does now. it relate to now? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you did, I mean, you did kick off, you did end up kicking off your reunion tour <clears throat> at Primavera, but mm -hmm. just this year. Um, mm -hmm. I was there and it, it, it was honestly a festival highlight. Like it mm -hmm. felt like such a joyful reunion. I wondered, did it feel like that on stage? I don't know. I mean, I was, I kind of felt a little, it just kind of went so fast. Right. And, uh, uh, but, but, and we were kind of in our little bubble there, you know. Definitely we nervous. Played. Yeah, yeah, we were nervous. And, but when you did look out, you, I mean, there was a lot of, definitely a lot of people. And, and uh, I think we played pretty good. Good enough. You know? Family and friends didn't yeah. say it was cool in the audience. But yeah, I know yeah. some of my friends were backstage and they had taken like some mushroom pills, you know. <laughs> they were tripping a bit. And I could tell when they were backstage that... Um, they were like, this is a bad trip, maybe, you know, like just the feeling <laughs> back before we played. Because it was like our first show ever. And it's a pretty big venue, Huge, you know, yeah. and I think this band from Australia, Tame Impala, mm. they have a fancy light show and like a bunch of hits. And, you're, you know, you kind of look in the mirror and you're like, I'm not worthy, you know, like yeah. before you go out. Yeah, there. We didn't have the space. We didn't have the ELO spaceship, you know, like. <laughs> To play it was on. almost like you have to be pushed out onto the stage. Um, so, uh, at least for me. Uh, and but you know, the, that's one of those cases where you hope that the people and the um, lift you up. You know, the fans. And there were definitely a lot of psych people there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I walked around. I took a million like COVIDy selfies um, <laughs> with people, and I just met people from all over Europe. Uh, South America, you know, they were just like, we had circled this date, we bought the tickets two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're playing now, why did you tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but in I different do feel, places. Yeah, I do feel that is exactly how it felt in the audience, yeah. like, and it went so far back, it mm. was like, the crowd was huge. Um, yeah, it was, there was some, probably a little post-pandemic or, you know, let's, just admit it, we're acting like it's over mm. type um, vibe at that festival. Like it just seemed like people were really pumped to hear music live in a communal setting. Um, totally. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to be part of that. Yeah, and at Primavera, you know, you had, uh, you paid for over two hours, which was so great for everybody who was able to hear so much of your back catalog. And you have such a large back catalog. Um, how do you go about for this reunion tour? How do you go about picking set lists? Well, we, I mean, there was a, a very long um, thread on, on, our, uh, on our phones about <laughs> that. Uh, it went, I think it started about, uh, you know, me saying like, oh, hey guys, can we concentrate on maybe 25, 30 songs? And then it ended up being about 65 or 70 songs yeah. by the end. And um, which is really cool because it gave, you know, gave me a chance to kind of get back in the mind of those songs, you know? I mean, some of them I don't even remember, you know, what we ever did on them. And, and so it was really fun to, to get back and hear them and play them. And, and uh, I mean, it's, there's a lot of great songs. Yeah, you know? there was a conscious effort knowing that we were gonna play four shows in each town. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way we decided to do it instead of playing one big show. Um, and, you know, how to uh, attack that as a fan and as a, like, bored, almost retiree, uh, as, which I am, you know, which was like, I can take, take some time to go back and visit those songs and, and not get completely in the going through the motions uh, t tour style, which, and yeah. I mean, you want to have a balance of that. Um, most bands would tell you that. You want to have some things where you feel safe, you know the song, you can get your muscle memory, mm -hmm. things that work to an audience, show busy, things like that, mm -hmm. mixed with something to keep a little spark in your um, love life, as it were, you know, like um, experimentation, uh, trying new things, uh, <laughs> threesomes. Uh, no, but you know, it's like, uh, <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> that's the idea that I just that's 
how we work and that's yeah. you know you also project that upon your fans you imagine yourself in the audience what you would want yeah. are you willing to make that extra effort mm -hmm. to um do something that's like can spark conversation mm -hmm. or a little bit of life instead of yeah i mean I, and i think that almost every band that's doing reunions is doing the same thing we're not acting special here yeah, yeah there's some older geezers that are just playing the hits or something but most bands in this world they are being artisanal and um to use an adjective uh you know to make it like their thing and mm. like this special thing that you need to do in this like you know, whatever it's, it, it makes it happy for us world. too mm. so be, you know I, I think it's a it's a mix of both. You know, you can see the fans and hear the hear their reactions. But for for me personally, it's it's fun to to play songs we've never really played before. Right. Or, you know. Yeah, and a lot of people get very excited when it's kind of like they haven't played this song in twenty six years. Mm -hmm. Like I think in uh, Atlanta, you did Angel Cover Blues for oh, sure, the the yeah. first time mm -hmm. uh, since uh, nineteen ninety six. Um, as the tour continues, like, are we going to see more of those kind of first plays in a Not long time? Not much left. Not much <laughs> left, to be honest. Yeah, we've like done just do. about everything. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there. <laughs> but, yeah, it's still a different set list. Like, you know, four nights at the Roundhouse. Uh, you know, yeah, there's going to yeah, be... Yeah, it'll be, be different. ...over by the time you see this, but it will have been different. Yeah. And, um, you know, we also saw surprises in another way, like with Kurt Vile coming on stage in uh, Philadelphia. Mm. Um, how did that come about? Uh, Kurt and I have the same manager, um, and I'm a fan of Kurt's, and he's a fan of Pavement. And so I just said, dude, <laughs> dude. Zarek is stained. I knew. Come I, could, on, I mean, dude. I could see him. I can sing his song. He <laughs> you know, like, I could totally sing it. Hear him singing that. Oh, you're so and great. And he said, he said yes, which is cool. Yeah. And he's the mayor of Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, in a way, you know, like he has uh, a lot of Philly in his. I wish we could have brought him on tour with us. That would have been great. We did every night. <laughs> would he be your first choice of musical guest on tour? Maybe well, that's, that's our next tour. We can just bring bring out those yeah. kind of people. Yeah. We didn't want to make it a total, like, it has to be a guest every night type thing. No. Mm. That was, like, pretty cool. Well, <laughs> earlier in the year when you were touring in uh, New York, there was a pop-up pavement museum <laughs> um, marking a residency at the King's Theatre. And um, we saw, like, Snail Mail and Soccer mm -hmm. Mummy and mm. Bully and Sad 13, and they covered Grounded. Um, what did you make of it? Oh, it was really cool. Really cool, yeah. And flattered, and it was really yeah. uh, beautiful. We watched it, and what can I say? Yeah, and uh, really nice. Speedy Ortiz played uh, "Cream of Gold," which was a song off Terror Twilight, and I was like, "That song's pretty good. We should we should do that one." <laughs> That's right. That's kind of nice, you know. You get like, uh, you always. I mean, most groups, if you are lucky enough to have fans or. Um, blessed enough to have fans of that are in bands and then they play your song or show an interest in it you learn a little bit sometimes maybe you dress for you play for other musicians or something and then they like something you're like ah well snail mail fell off the stage when she was um, playing a solo and whatever song she did so it was kind of like pavement <laughs> The old yeah, days. The <laughs> but there is this thing I see, which is these like newer bands or like Gen Z bands, if you, if you want to call them that, who were really young when Slanted or even Terra Twilight came out. And yet they still have this kind of respect and devotion to, to pavement sound. Like, do you, do you see that? Do you, do you notice that in them? Uh, I mean, sonically, if they listen to it, certainly it's relatable the struggle when you're first starting it's right. pretty amateurish racket and then like i think it can a offer a um like uh i can start this way with just doing it 
doing it myself with like not much knowledge of logic or pro tools and and I can graduate eventually I can have Nigel Goddard recording my records one day you know it offers a template or for a dream I, and um, I th that's what I would think is one thing that would be inspirational mm. besides the songs and being good and <laughs> in themselves uh, input for a dream that's a good title yeah and yeah I think and it's not my it's not particularly like in modes of um, someone's gonna steal that the modes of uh, masculinity <laughs> modes you know it's like it's not so macho and stuff so groups like that probably could relate um, as that True. some of that um, style of music is kind of over well, it's not over, but it's been challenged at least. Mm. Yeah, and then you have <clears throat> you have people like Biba Doobie writing writing a song that's called "I Wish I Was Stephen Malkmus." I mean, what does Crazy. that make you feel like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought the song was pretty catchy, so <laughs> that's where I go first. You know, yeah. yeah. As far as the yeah, it's bizarre to have your well, you know. <laughs> It's not a very beautiful name, <laughs> so it kind of sounds like the so. You're coming back and you're performing, and in many ways everything is the same because there's that 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 connection that people get watching live music is is, is always the same. But then I suppose you then have other things like harness your hopes going viral on TikTok and teenagers dancing to it. Um, when something like that happens, does it feel like uh, this, it, this is a different world now? Um, I mean, it's just sort of like a weird event that where your music goes, um, this can happen. There's lots of stories, not only ours, you know, of like certain songs. Uh, when the group first started, there was this band in England called The Wedding Present. They were a um, 1990s like indie stalwarts, and they covered a song off our very first single, um, Out of the Blue. Um, not the song called Out of the Blue, it's called Box Elder. Um, sort of Out of the Blue, they picked that. And that's mm -hmm. sort of what I feel like with the um, Harness Your Hopes. It's sort of like a, just a weird... Yeah, it took it in another direction. Weird now, cultural thing amazing. where, like, the culture, like, like you interact oddly, but by putting by putting yourself out there, um, you at least you have that opportunity that for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Even if you're insecure or think your music is crap, you like go ahead and do it, and then like the world, like, sees you. Mm. I mean, that that's like pretty fun part of doing any art. But specifically ours, that's mine, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you, like you said, there was new life breathed into Harness Your Hopes, um, top of the, the well, popular list on Spotify. New, new, li new life in, in kind of pavement, really. Mm. You know, no, I know. I know. It, made, it made me feel crazy. bad. Yeah, bad that I didn't put it on the album. <laughs> like, nobody said, like, that's a great song or something. Oh, I'm sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember saying that? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely better than some of the songs that are on the album. Um, not only because uh, people liked it. Well, um, why do you think it was left off? I must have just had an idea of... Well, I know one thing is I didn't think I sang it that well, and it was... Uh, like um blah 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 and i already had a song like that on shady lane and um you know i was just like and i didn't think the lyrics were completely finished and it was uh i sped it up when we mixed it or when i sang it i had to like speed it up on tape you can do that now with the digital just with the click of the button but we had to and then I could sing it, you know, it was like lethargic until we sped it up. But I heard like Michael Jackson does that, like on Beat It and songs like that. Right. Or right. Quincy Jones. So it wasn't, so I was like, maybe I can get some of that Michael Jackson love. <clears throat> Did it feel right then, uh, earlier this year, to release a music video for Harness Your Hopes? Is that why, like, you decided to do it? Um, the video? Mm. It was sort of a test run for this mock documentary that that's going to be maybe made about pavement eventually. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, 
we were just checking some visuals, visual cues and stuff like that. Because it was a super reflexive video, right? Yeah. I mean, for people who don't know about it, maybe just explain yeah. what happens. Yeah, it was made in the style of like, yeah, so Zapruder, Zapruder, uh, pavement obsessive, um, going back with nostalgia and, you know, just the hall of mirrors that mm. uh, past the past is and the present and how music makes you feel. Um, so all of that was attempted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. In a 2019, NME asked mm -hmm. you if there was any new music or new songs in the works. And um, you said no, because you wanted the reunion tour to be like the 1990s. <laughs> um, is that a statement you stand by? Yeah, sure. Completely. It's yes. totally cringe if we did that. Yeah. No way. These songs are good. They exist in this present. Yeah. There's no point in, I mean, that's just me. Anyone can do what they want. It's your life, choose your adventure. Any band wants to make a new album, they like to do that. That's yeah. totally rad, but like, uh, yeah, yeah, not happening. We Even like, post we like what we've done, done. We, like, yeah. we like it. Yeah, there's no, it's, yeah. We're, we're real without doing that, you know, like, I, I understand the impetus to put out a new record. It makes it seem like the band's more legit or something and not just like a cash-in deal. You know what I mean? But it doesn't have to be that way if you just own, own your songs and people come, they can see if you're just like mm. geezers on a cash-in cash reunion tour, if they're like doing it because they are having a blast and they dig the songs and mm. yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's cynical. But like I said, everybody can, I mean, yeah, you might just be like, yeah, let's get this, see if we still got the spark, you know, like go in the studio and, but, you know, look, look at the most of the versions of that. I mean, I'm talking classic rock things. They don't turn out that well. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Well, I think as a pavement fan, uh, you know, I don't think we would always want a new song, yeah. but at the same That's time. True. But I mean, it's to me that feels like it's just you put it out there and then people just get to say if it's cringe or if it's, mm. oh, it's pretty good. You know, it's like a, we don't need to do that. Yeah. We like what we did. Mm. And also, I think <clears throat> that there is, because there is such an extensive back catalog, like you will always find be finding new things. Mm -hmm. Like the whole vibe is this. Yeah. Almost culty underground. Yeah. yeah. We have, sound. you know, it's not like we couldn't play a new song live either. I mean, I'm not completely averse to that even. Just don't need to record it. And there's like jam tangents. Um, one way that um, geezer bands like survive is through like jam tangents, you know. Um, so we can take our songs and I don't know if jam tangents is a thing that you would say here in England, but you, know, like you expand the songs and you go like kind of in a, we do that in a couple tunes live, you know. Yeah, just, that's what makes it new. Yeah. You know, sort of have some moments where you're just improvising and yada yada. Yeah. Um, so, guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Haven, thank you so much for joining us on Enemy. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Good night.